So what are you going to do now with all the stars, Gino? Well, I suppose you kind of are a star. Kind of reminded of the ending of uh, Final Fantasy Mystic Quest a little bit. But, well, I won't spoil it for you. If you haven't played the game. Kind of reminds me of the ending of Final Fantasy X a bit, too, in a way. Uh... Hmm. Just a doubt, man. Is it wrong that this ending makes me sadder than the ending to Final Fantasy X? <laughs> Sorry, viewers. <laughs> well, it's nice to see Mario and Bowser working together for a change instead of always competing with one another. Kind of reminds me of something I was thinking about. So, Mario previously was known as Jumpman, right? So, that being the case, why is Luigi the one who can jump higher than Mario? At least in the Mario games I've played, he can, like Mario 2. Both of them, I think. It's like Highlander 2, there's multiple versions. Except more death. I thought the sword looked kind of nice in your castle there, Bowser. It's kind of nice and intimidating. But I suppose it didn't belong to you, and you gotta maintain it, you know? You don't want it to rust or anything like that. What is that thing behind them, anyway? Now I'm the one in charge! I can make it rain whenever I want, so don't piss me off! I don't know why, but for some reason this scene here kind of reminds me of Mario is missing for some reason. I don't know why, but... Hey, what are you doing with my car? There's that, uh... I don't know if you saw it, but there's that little... I don't know, what was that, a shy guy in the back there? Driving Bowser's flying vehicle or whatever? Oh, nice sunset there. We hope you enjoyed the ride! <laughs> Come on, Yoshi, you can beat him! Oh, right, eat a cookie. Haha! <laughs> Cheater! I never had to use a cookie. Ah, oh, nice to see Rez and Rainy enjoying their honeymoon. Oh, yeah, I suppose I don't need to hold the controller anymore. Now I'm gonna move on to Wind Waker. Goodbye, Tadavsky. And Frog Fuchsius, and there was that pupil of his hiding in the trees to the left there. More of a fan of Tchaikovsky, though, of yours. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> Will you be my Valentina? I didn't know Berto was the Justice of the Peace. Reminds me of another game. What are they standing on, anyway? <laughs> Where are you winking at us, Mario? Don't answer that, viewers. Let's watch the credits roll.
Uh, I love this game. I love Ted Woolsey's translations. But it is finally over. But yeah, for the graphics... Oh, time to review and look back on our adventure. For, for the graphics, I'd give them a uh, 9 out of 10. I think they're... Uh, I love all how colorful everything is. It's very easy to see everything. Well, most of everything in the game. But the only thing I really give it a knock on is like the 2.5D perspective. And... Like there was that 3D maze part without a map. Yeah, that was pretty annoying to get through. But other than that, it was fine. I mean, it wasn't like Final Fantasy VII, where, like, the characters got so small on some of the maps, it was hard to see where the hell you were going. So, I like how they handled it here. And for the music, easily, uh, 10 out of 10. I mean, Shimamura, I, I, how do you beat her? I mean, she's just easily one of my top three composers, I'd say. Even back then, I mean, just... Uh, especially the, the forest maze music, that song you just never get out of your head. Uh, battle themes, get you revved up and everything. The only thing I'd say it was missing was like a little bit of a sad theme. I mean, even when Gino was uh, going away, just eh, not, nothing really that got me choked up there. But whatever, this isn't meant to be a serious game. And for the uh, plot, I'd, I'd also give it a 9 out of 10. I thought it, it was pretty engaging. We always had some new objectives, some problems to solve. The villains showed up uh, really early to establish the problems and our motivation throughout the plot. Even though, yeah, it was pretty silly there. That's not how you spell Yoko. I don't think, anyway. Maybe that's just an alternate spelling. I don't know. Where was I? Oh yeah, with the uh, with the plot there. So yeah, I mean, the only thing you I, I really knock it on it for is I mean yeah it's really silly maybe a little bit too much but uh, I, I like it I'd prefer it to be a game to be a little too silly than a bit than taking it too ser taking itself too seriously. I thought uh, what's his name I thought Woolsey did the translation. What gifts? Oh, he was just, uh, supervising. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Woolsey. Whatever you say. Yeah, and for the battle mechanics of the game, I'd also give them, uh, well, I'd give them an 8 out of 10. Uh, I'd, normally I'd probably give them a 7 out of 10, because there's really not a whole lot to them. Uh, I mean, there's nothing extraordinarily wrong, it's just, it, uh... There's not a whole lot of strategy to it. I mean, it's mostly DPS and healing and a few minor buffs and debuffs, and that's about it. And most of the debuffs are pretty useless there too. So, but what it does, what it lacks in balancing mechanics or difficulty, in my opinion, I think it makes up for it in the timing mechanics, where it keeps you engaged in the battle. Because that's really what I look for from. Uh, gameplay for from battle mechanics in a JRPG. Not so much difficulty or challenge, but does it engage me? Doesn't it require me to think or actually, you know, play the game, so to speak? And the timing mechanics really do that for me here. You can't just well, I suppose you could, but it, you can't really optimize your party or your damage output by just pressing the A button and not paying attention to anything that's going on in the game. It's not just press X to win, you gotta pay attention to the timing of everything that you're doing there. So, yeah, I mean, I really like them. Pretty much all, I think all the characters were pretty useful. It would have been nice if Bowser was a bit more useful than just fear, because, I mean, his magical attacks and... His speed were pretty bad, but other than that, I mean... And debuffs, like I said, weren't really that good either. Would have been nice if they made those more useful for Bowser. So overall, I'd give Super Mario RPG a 9 out of 10. Definitely one of the best games on the Super Nintendo. Uh, nice fireworks. 
And here, here comes our reward for buy, for spending 2,500 gold on the fireworks. Game? Oh, it's coming. Yep, there it is. We get a firework with a star and... Yeah, that's it. That's all you get. 2,500 gold, and that's all you get for it. <laughs> what a waste of money. But I suppose you don't have much else to spend your money on anyway there, so... Oh, well. Yeah, it's too bad this game got so overshadowed when it was released, because it was just... It was a, well, really late Super Nintendo era title. We already had the Nintendo 64 on its way, practically. So... Yeah, I didn't play this one as much when I was younger, but, uh, like, I wish I did, but, oh well. I mean, I played it a little, played it once or twice, but I played most of the other Squaresoft games a lot more. So that's all for Let's Play Super Mario RPG! I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I've had making it, and I'll be starting a new LP coming soon. This is H.C. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day, and see you next Let's Play! Now I'll leave the music on for you viewers.